Your lymphedema, taking back control. Self-lymphatic drainage can help improve lymphatic drainage from an area that is congested or damaged, soften and improve skin condition, and can make you feel more in control of the management of your lymphedema. The technique shown in this video is based on FG MLD and the fill and flush technique from the Lymphedema Training Academy. There are many different methods and you may have been shown one that is slightly different. Discuss this with your practitioner. This film is not designed to replace individual advice given to you by your practitioner. Self-lymphatic drainage should not be carried out if you are undergoing active cancer treatment, such as radiotherapy or chemotherapy, have an infection, have had a recent thrombosis or an untreated heart condition. If you are at all concerned, then discuss with your practitioner or family doctor prior to starting SLD. Although you can use this film alone, it has been designed to be used alongside the LSN self-management book, Your Lymphedema, Taking Back Control, which can be purchased from the LSN website, www.lymphedema.org. Remember, as with anything in life, learning SLD needs lots of practice, persistence and patience to perfect the movements and sequences, but it will soon become second nature. Hi, I'm Denise Hardy. I'm the nurse specialist here at Kendall Lymphology Centre, as well as being the nurse advisor for the Lymphedema Support Network. For how long, I have no idea. But here I am today talking about simple lymphatic drainage. And we're going to go through the sequences that have recently been published in our book about managing lymphedema. First of all, before we just touch on the, the SLD, I wanted to just remind everyone about the lymphatic system. This obviously is what we're going to be doing a lot of in the next half an hour or so. The lymphatic system is crucial for removing um, fluid and waste products um, that happens all the time. It's produced constantly. And as a result, if you've got an obstruction or an overload of lymphatic fluid, then we're going to get lymphedema. And so simple lymphatic drainage gives us a, a way of improving that drainage. The deep system you can see here on this poster, but on top of that, we have a very superficial network, which if you look at this very crude tool that I'm showing you, is a little netting here. And that really mimics just what the superficial network looks like just underneath the skin. If we look at it in a 3D form, we see these little these filaments here, which are anchored to the tissues. And by gentle movement of the skin and the tissues, these tissue filaments and, and networks move. And as a result, fluid can move within it. There's no valves or anything stopping it, it's all interconnected. And so any movements that we do within the limb, we can move fluid around obstructions or to areas where fluid can drain more easily. So by using SLD, we can actually get fluid to move in different areas to parts that are not congested. And hopefully by doing that, we can ensure that the fluid drains away more efficiently. And as a result, your lymphedema will reduce. So who can do simple lymphatic drainage? Well, you, of course, can do that, and we hope we can teach you. Having said that, a carer or a relative, your spouse, can help you too. It's often sometimes easier to do that, but essentially it's you who's got to manage your lymphedema. So we're hoping that you will be able to do it, and our instructions, I hope, will be simple enough for you to learn over time. It does take practice and patience, but if you can do it, you will get really good results from reducing your lymphedema. When is simple lymphatic drainage useful? Well, hopefully it'll be something that you start to do every day as part of your self-management. But perhaps you're going in to have decongestive lymphatic therapy or intensive treatment with your lymphedema team. It's very, very useful to do it while you're in bandages. So keeping up with the lymphatic drainage is really helpful. We do it too predominantly for those who've got midline swelling, people who've got genital edema, people with breast edema, or those with facial edema too. So it can be really helpful for anybody, whether it be leg or arm or in the trunk, as, as I previously mentioned. It can be also helpful for those who've got scar tissue, scars from a breast cancer perhaps, or even trauma for any sort of surgery or even a road traffic accident. The lymphatic drainage, we can teach you to gently soften up those areas 
um, and particularly areas of fibrosis, as we call it, or hardening of the tissues that sometimes occurs with lymphedema patients. And finally, for those who use an intermittent pneumatic compression therapy, then if we implement simple lymphatic drainage before and after, we've got a much better chance of that fluid draining away more efficiently. We often have to avoid doing SLD. And the cases that we uh, suggest that is when you've perhaps had an infection, uh, an acute phase of infection. We want that infection to settle down. Perhaps you've had a recent DVT, deep vein thrombosis. Again, it wouldn't be wise to do simple lymphatic drainage at that time. And we usually advise around eight weeks before you start initiating your simple lymphatic drainage again. Perhaps you've had a heart problem. Again, we want that to settle down. We want it to be stable. And we would speak to your medics about that before suggesting that you continue with your SLD. And finally, perhaps you're in active cancer treatment. Perhaps you're having chemotherapy or radiotherapy, and there's just too much to, to be doing at that particular time to concentrate on SLD. So perhaps that would take a back seat. So those are the main areas really that we wouldn't do it. So what about when we do do it here in clinic? Well, we do a lot of teaching. We really want you to get that sequence correct. And as I've said earlier, it takes a lot of time to do that. You think you've got it, but when you go home, you've forgotten what we've said. And that's why having the handouts and the book is really helpful. But when we do the lymphatic drainage, we don't really use any cream or oil. You might have had lovely massages elsewhere, and they use lots of lovely lotions and potions. But when we're doing a simple lymphatic drainage, we want to actually get the contact of our skin on skin. We want to be able to manipulate and move the fluid which is in these vessels underneath the skin. We don't do it hard, we do it very gentle, but we want enough pressure to be able to move the skin over the underlying tissues. If it's too hard, you will redden the skin, and that's just too much. We'll guide you, we'll help you, but just a gentle movement where you can see the skin wrinkling is usually plenty enough pressure for that sequence to work well. You'll see that we start our SLD by doing deep breathing. That helps this deeper system to work more efficiently. So that's a really important part of the sequence that we'll be teaching you to do. We want you to do it well and we want you to do it efficiently. Our movements are also very slow. This system is sluggish. It doesn't drain very quickly. So if we try and, and, and encourage it to drain more efficiently, it won't work as well. So let's keep the movements nice and slow. We usually do about four or five um, treatments a day or encourage you to do that. That sounds a lot, I know but it only takes about 10 minutes to do it. We do about four uh, rep repetitions each time. And once you've got that sequence in your head, it literally takes just a few minutes. The more you can do it, the more efficiently that lymphedema will drain. Eventually, you might only have to do it once a day or even not. So it's really worth doing it in the initial stages. Here at Kendall Lymphology Centre, we are looking at simple lymphatic drainage as taught by the Lymphedema Training Academy. I've done lots of different courses over the years. I've been in lymphedema a long, long time. So I've picked up lots of different methods. But predominantly we teach um, the same uh, every time, trying to keep it simple, trying to keep it stable. We also use balls that you'll see in our treatments, these. And these are used in areas where we have lymph nodes or lymph glands. These help to empty notes, so by putting them into an armpit, for example, we can squeeze against them and that will help to empty the nodes. We will then move fluid using our hands and that will then drain into those nodes that we've emptied. If you don't have a ball, and many of the lymphedema uh, clinics will provide you with one, or you can buy one, of course, from the lymphedema support network. But if you don't have one of those, or the dog's eaten it, for example, then a rolled up flannel would just suffice. Just roll up a flannel and again put that into the area where the lymph nodes are. Gently squeeze and that will empty the tissues, the, the, the lymph nodes accordingly. You can also use other tools to help you. If you don't feel that your hands is good enough, you don't feel that you've got the right pressure, then perhaps you could use um, a, a massager like this. It's literally just a very small um, brush or tool and it literally just sweeps across the, the skin. You don't need to put any pressure on at all. Really effective. Perhaps you don't like touching your own skin. Perhaps your partner doesn't want to do it and prefers to do this. They get the pressure just right with that. So that's something that, that can be very useful. We can use rollers. These are just paint rollers from the DIY shop. 
So think of anything you can do to, to actually move the skin. This is an electronic massage, a battery operated. It just literally needs to be rested on the skin and the skin will move gently. You'll find your own things that work for you. This is a very old, very antiquated um, tool that we often used to use years ago. It looks a little bit formidable now, but it still works, particularly on very larger areas. So those rolls just roll nicely and help the skin to move more efficiently. But lots of different things available now. Those are just a very few that are available at the moment. So simple lymphatic drainage is really, really helpful. As you'll see from the sequences that we've recorded for you, we hope that you'll follow them and learn from them, but we hope that you'll do them. Hopefully again, your lymphedema teams will will practice and, and give you more solutions to your own particular lymphedema. Everybody's different and perhaps the sequence might change a little bit for you, but it will not work overnight. You do have, as I've said earlier, you do need to practice, you need to be patient and you need to persist in what you're doing. The more you do it, the more effective it will be. And of course, do remember that it's not a standalone treatment. It won't work on its own. It's not the only thing that will help your lymphedema. You'll need, of course, to use your compression garments You'll need to do your skin care, you'll need to exercise, and of course you'll need to watch your weight. But simple lymphatic drainage is a really useful tool to use alongside those. I really hope it works for you. Good luck. Self Lymphatic Drainage, SLD, for the head, face and neck. Okay, so Martin, today we're going to go through some simple lymphatic drainage or self-lymphatic drainage that I'm going to go through with you and show you what you can do at home to help right. your lymphedema of your neck area and uh, the lower jaw and any, uh, any other areas of swelling that you're struggling with currently. So we begin our simple lymphatic drainage or self-lymphatic drainage, as it's now called, um, with some deep breathing. So if you could bring your fingers up to your breastbone here, and I'll just yes. step out of your way so that you don't hit me there. <laughs> as you breathe in, if you could stretch your arms out to the side and really have a good stretch and open up that chest cage, that's lovely. That right? That's right, as you breathe in, and then as you breathe out, the arms come back to the middle, that's perfect. And as you breathe out, just as you were doing there, mm -hmm. You breathe as if you're blowing out candles on a birthday cake to really work this mouth. They need a lot of candles as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so take a deep breath in with me, stretch out, stretch those arms out, that's great, and then blow out through your mouth as you exhale, that's lovely. Perfect. Three more of those. So. Super. Perfect. Two to go. You're okay there. <laughs> and an absolute, a difficult candle. Yeah. <laughs> right, a tough one. <laughs> so following that, we're now going to empty the lymph nodes at the collarbones, at the level of the collarbones. And this is the area where any fluid that's drained from the lymphatic system actually joins back into the bloodstream, strangely mm. enough. So it all, all the fluid from the lymphatic system ends up here and here. So I'm going to show you with your hands how you can give those a bit of a boost and empty those lymph nodes around the collarbones. Mm -hmm. And we'll do them one at a time. So if you start with this hand mm -hmm. to empty the nodes on this side, I'd like you to stretch your fingers and find the collarbone and put one finger above the collarbone and one below the collarbone. If you can find, perfect, you found it. And then slowly stretch the skin towards the notch in the middle of your neck, just a slow stretch there with quite a bit of pressure and then lift the fingers off the skin because we don't want to push it the other way. Start again at the shoulder end and stretch that skin down towards that notch in the middle. That's perfect. And we'll do four of those. So two more on that side. Mm -hmm. So it's not too much pressure then really, is it? It's quite a bit of pressure. Shall okay. I show you the sort of pressure that we're looking for? And then if you, you don't mind, that would be helpful. Yeah, thank you. This is the kind of pressure that we'd like right. you to use. Is that heavier or lighter than you were using? Or about the same? Um, that might be a bit lighter. A bit it? lighter? Yeah, so oh, that's... you're obviously quite strong. Because I'm <laughs> pressing quite hard here. All right. 
that's very helpful. We Thank don't you. want too much pressure. We don't want no. to make the skin red or sore. And if there's any tenderness around that area, we don't want to make it worse. Okay. But we certainly want enough pressure, just enough really to move the skin because the, a lot of the superficial lymphatics are just below the surface of the skin there. So we actually want to move the skin rather than slide over the top of the skin. We do want enough pressure to move it. Okay, so if you could do the same on this side with that hand, find those fingers above and below the collarbone, that's perfect. Wonderful. And we do it nice and slowly because these lymphatic mm -hmm. vessels are very slow to empty and move. There's been two fat in there, that's mm -hmm. interesting. <laughs> Speeding up a bit there. Mm -hmm. That looks nice, it is. Nice and steady. <laughs> oh. That's yeah. perfect, Martin. Well done. If you ever struggle with that or mm. if you can't reach or whatever, sometimes we ask people to use a ball. And instead of stretching the skin with your fingers, we get them to tuck a ball against their collarbone and either shrug their shoulder up or turn the head to the side and compress the lymph nodes in that way. But you okay. seem very good at using hands like that, so absolutely fine. I'll leave the ball there in case we need it later. Okay, good. The next thing I'd like you to do is, it's a funny, funny little manoeuvre, I want you to turn your hands this way around if you can, so the little fingers are against the base of your ears, and then, yeah. perfect, and then stretch that skin just in a downwards motion, down again towards that collarbone area there. So try and cover as much skin as you can with your fingers. So um, all the fingers have contact. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. And then stretch the skin in a downwards direction. Okay, there. Perfect. If you can aim it more towards the collarbones, that would be perfect. Maybe a little bit more in front of the ears rather than behind at this stage, that's great. That's lovely, okay. Have okay. another one of those a little sort of in front of the ears, that's perfect. Good. Okay, lovely, and now the next one, you can either use your fingers or one of these little fancy rollers. Um, I'll give you a roller to use and I won't take the top of mine and then it'll okay. still be clean underneath it, but do take the top of yours to use it. It's not going to put them in blue paint by any chance, Not unless it? we fill the bottom up with some blue paint, <laughs> but we haven't done that today. So I'm going to ask you to start in the middle of the chin mm -hmm. and just slowly, but quite firmly, draw the roller down towards the notch of your neck there. Mm -hmm. And then, whoops, that has come off mine. Start all the way along the chin, moving down towards the collarbones. And this side of the chin, you'll bring it down towards the collarbones on this side. Mm -hmm. And then when you come to this side of the chin, you'll draw it down towards the collarbone mm -hmm. on that side. So you can do it in, in any order you want. If you start at the middle and then move to one side and then back to the middle to the other side. And I'm going to ask you to do that four times as well. And I notice you put your head back a little bit, is that right? Or do you keep it? Just be comfortable. I okay. think I did it more to show you. Don't right. overstretch that skin, just stay comfortable. Okay. And put a little bit of pressure on, that's perfect. How does that feel with the roller? This is in a very sensitive area mm. around here, so mm. it's not pain. I wouldn't describe it as painful. No. But, uh, I know it'll be very different on the other side of my uh, neck. Don't do anything if it's painful on the tissue. We really don't want to disturb no. anything when it's when it is painful. Um, and I'm glad you pointed that out actually. So you can apply a little bit more pressure on that side mm -hmm. where it's not so painful. This is, this is fine. This one. Okay, but again, don't rush it. Just take it slowly. Because mm -hmm. although most of your surgery was on this side. That does have a role to play as well on that side of drainage, that's perfect. And would you prefer to use the roll? Would you think them fingers? Because you can use fingers to bring it down. Do you think it's better to use a roller or your fingers on that area? Perhaps it alternate it and see yeah. really, I think. Yeah, you know, okay. I can feel, it's interesting, well, the, the, I suppose the difference between the two, you get perhaps more of an even pressure, perhaps, I don't know. Okay, but, uh, well, well you can use either, whichever's comfortable for you. Yeah. So, okay, Good. super. So, having brought that down to the, to the nodes at the collarbone, I'd like you to repeat that emptying of the nodes now on the collarbone. So, pop your roller down just for a minute, okay, yeah. and repeat that emptying of the, the collarbone so nodes. So, below. Yeah, and either side, but we're going to do both sides, that's perfect. 
Was it possible to do the two at the same time, or would you recommend just doing you one? can do two at the same time if you if you crossing your arms so it won't do you any harm to do both yeah. at once it's just I didn't want to confuse you but yes absolutely you can do both at once <laughs> I'm to try, just, try it absolutely just, yeah. yeah i'm trying to think of time efficiency that's yes it. certainly and if you're sitting maybe having a um, quiet it's, fight it's, it's better to just do the one side i can feel that because the shoulder yeah yeah it better might the one side strain your shoulders good point that's great Nice and slowly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get too kind of it is funny because you can feel the, the benefits of it already in terms of um, it's quite a relaxing process, isn't it? Good. Okay, that's great. Good. So we've cleared there. Now we're going to go back to the face and the lower jaw and actually start working up the face, mm -hmm. sequentially up the face, but all the time you're doing these movements, everything heads down towards these collarbone drainage points here. Mm -hmm. um, so you can start on either side of the face, having done underneath the jaw, then I want you to start, start working a little bit higher up the, up the cheekbones yes. and bringing it down all the time over the jaw and aiming for that collarbone there and working outwards. And then same on the other side, working it out till you get about the level of your nose okay and you really you can't really overdo that you can sit and do it as many times as you like but i'd like you to do it about four times for now um, just starting low down working up the face and always Smashing. aiming out to the collarbones okay. so if you start on whichever side is better for you and again don't put too much pressure on there if it's sore Be a bit tender over your jaw. See, there. This is where Maybe. it's this part of my lip is mm. painful with the surgery. You see, but sure, um, okay. Again, I can feel the benefit of that part. Don't overdo if it's if it's as painful. Just gently on that side, don't, don't make it hurt. Mm -hmm. Is the other side easier for pain? No pain on yeah, this Yeah, I've got no pain on this side, you see. Mm -hmm. but, um, the temptation is just to rush it here because mm -hmm. it, say it's not painful at all. We still need to clear that side very well, even though you haven't got a lot of um, lymphedema on that side of your face. Because just occasionally, if this side of the face is not draining well, mm. it, some of the fluid will actually cross over to the other side of the face. So it is important that we clear that side as oh, well, that's, that's in case any know. fluid is going from side to side. So it's still still important to do it and do it slowly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good. And then when you get about level with your nose, the next thing I want you to do is start at the edge of your nose and actually take the fluid outwards to take it to the space in front of your ears because you've got some groups of lymph nodes here that sit in front of your ear. Right. So I want you to move that fluid slowly outwards to that area in front of your ear, four times along the side of your face there. Okay. Great. And the other side as well to match up. Mm -hmm. Okay, lovely. Now the sequence it, it takes it to here, but actually if you have puffy mm -hmm. eyelids. This a roller particularly is soft enough, you can actually even roll it right over your closed eyes to, as long as you're aiming the fluid out to the side to these collectors. Some people do have quite a lot of puffiness around their eyes after the surgery. So you can, you don't have to stop here, you can take it quite high up your face oh, as long as you're rolling know. the fluid out to the sides each time. I must say that I have got... Um under my eyelids, I've got kind of, I've not, I didn't have it before, and I don't know whether it is the lymphedema, yeah. or whether <clears> it is the um, old age and just kind of 
extra baggage. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, um, and a weight change so, as well. Your weight's changed, so that yes. will change sometimes the shape of your face. Oh, but that's good. So. Certainly can roll that across the lower parts of your eyes. If yeah, you like. very good. Won't do any damage there. So that's aiming that fluid out to that group of lymph nodes. So the top of the ear there, and then this the same one on the side. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good stuff. And then if you pop your roller down, I'd like you to repeat that move where your little fingers are up underneath your ears and you're stretching the skin just straight down if you can. It's not an easy manoeuvre with your arms, but it's straight down towards your collarbones down the side of your neck. Sort of quite in front and straight down the side of your neck. That's great. Four of those each side. Lost count now. I think that's three. That's at least four, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one's a funny one. Some people call it Mr. Spock from Star Trek. So you're going to put one finger behind the ear. Right. Behind each ear. And the rest of the fingers in front of the ear. And you're actually going to stretch the skin down. And here now you're affecting the lymph nodes in front of the ear and the group behind the ear, the post auricular lymph nodes. So finger behind. Both sides at the same time and give it a good old pull down, just slowly stretch it down as low as you can bring your hands. Well done, that's a, not an easy move to get. Well done, you do four of those for me. I like the Mr. Spock now. <laughs> that's good. Good stuff. And now for the group of nodes, the occipital nodes that are right at the back of the head, I actually want you to bring your hands even further than they were before and sweep those down towards the back of your neck mm -hmm. to empty those occipital nodes. You've got the little finger there, you're sweeping it right down here to the back mm -hmm. of your head there. So give that a go. This is a real workout, isn't it, with your arms as well? Well, I'm actually falling asleep. I'm enjoying it, actually. <laughs> Dancing and relaxing. Try and push that down as low as you can at the back. Well done, that's perfect. Perfect, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> that's what we strive for, isn't it? So. Back to that tricky one with little fingers underneath the ears, called a neck sweep, which is just sweeping down towards the collarbone there. I think that's one of the hardest ones because you're almost curling your hands round. Just that long neck sweep there. Well done, that's great. Four of those. Four. And nearly there, last but one. I'm going to empty these collarbone nodes again. Mm -hmm. So as you saw, it's difficult to do both at a time. So if you do one side for me, four sweeps on one side. That's great. And four on the other. And then we'll finish with some more deep breathing just to relax everything back down. So fingers up to your sternum here and a big deep breath in. And then blowing out those birthday candles through your mouth. Fabulous. And three more of those for me, that's great. Put some pressure in your mouth to really stretch your mouth. Fantastic. Last one. Ready. <laughs> They're all gone. Well done. Okay, that's fine. 
great. Enjoyed that. You didn't need your spray once, did you? Then? No. <laughs> <laughs> we really hope you found that video useful. Remember, though, to speak to your therapist about doing the SLD massage. She might be able to make it more individual to your own particular needs. You'll remember during the video that we used the uh, lymphatic balls. These were introduced into our simple lymphatic drainage techniques by Professor Belgrado, and they've been really useful, particularly when emptying nodes, which you can do at any time during the day. Emptying those nodes will really help the, the lymphatic drainage to work more efficiently. So remember to do it more often if you can. The more you do it, the more efficiently your lymphedema uh, will drain and reduce nicely. There's one thing we didn't mention during the video, and that was that you shouldn't do the lymphatic drainage over your compression garment. Either take the garment off and perform the massage then, or just work on the, the root of the, the limb, where the sleeve or the garment ends. That would be much more pertinent. And of course, our models that we used during the SLD demonstration, they did have clothing on we would recommend that you did it skin on skin. That really has a much better effect. So again, we really hope you found the video useful. Remember to look at your book. The book, The All Lymphedema, Taking Back Control, covers all aspects of simple lymphatic drainage that you've seen today. So please refer to that and any other aspect of lymphedema that you'd like to learn more about. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Denise, Joe, and all those at Kendall Lymphology for sharing your expertise so willingly. To our wonderful models, Phil, Julie, Jim, and Martin. To Jacob at lockeddoor.co.uk. And to you for watching. The LSN is a charitable incorporated organisation registered with the Charity Commission in the UK, number 1193. 800. The LSN receives no statutory or NHS income and is reliant on the generosity of our supporters to fund our work. If you would like to support us, please click the link below or go to www.justgiving.com/lymphedema support.